Mm. We want to talk about the murder, the case now being dubbed. Yeah, which murder? Blank. There's been a lot of murders. So let's let's figure out which right, murder. There's been a lot of murders. And honestly, I, I paused for a minute because I was trying to think about which murder I was thinking about. The yeah. the kids in the Idaho, before the white girl kids, from South one, Carolina. Girl, this, that. Yeah, the shooting in Colorado. To tell you the truth, I got stuck for a minute because when I said murder, to your point, th- there was a flurry of information that flew across my head. It's fucked up. Yeah. Which, which murder? Fuck. It's shameful. I mean, wh- wh- where do we begin? And I'm not letting go of the Brett Farr case either. Let me remind you, this man actively wrote a grant to get money for poor people that's supposed to be used for poor people and used it at his alma mater where he and his daughter went. It's shameful. Mm -hmm. This was an active participant in a fraudulent activity. There are $99 million that are being questioned, including money that was fraudulently gathered by a pharmaceutical company that he has a relationship with. Mm -hmm. I am not going to let go of that as long as the public won't let go of Kyrie Irving. Having said that, what say you, sir? Which murder do we start with? Shame on earth. Shame on earth. Let's start with the mass shooting because that was the most people that got killed. And I can't believe I have to say that, but that's where we are right now. As you said, shame on earth. Colorado Springs, the Q Club. Actually, we've made a mistake, Jay. Mm. It's not the most. Well, technically you are right. On deck to be the most are the 15,000 protesters that the overwhelming majority of the clergy in Iran voted to be executed. We can actually, yes. They want all of them to get the death penalty. And it's it's overwhelmingly women. It's all overwhelmingly women. It's overwhelmingly women. And it was the overall majority of their clergy. The importance of that, the significance of that, is that we're led to believe that this is a small minority group and the rest of the country is wearing bikinis. That is not the case. I believe it was, I believe there was 267 clergymen who were able to vote on what to do with the Iranian protesters. And 200 and change voted for the murder of the 15,000 protesters, which are in reaction to the women who have been systemically murdered in the last few months by the morality police, ignited by the Iranian woman who was killed under duress by the Iranian police. There are systemic rapings that are going on. Mm -hmm. They are raping people as young as 12 years old. And if they are virgins, they marry them first and then rape them. Forced marriage. Forced marriage. Or they sell them. It's shameful. And like I said, the clergy voted to execute Mm -hmm. 15,000 people. I think we should be viewing this through the lens of a human rights issue, similar to how we use we, um, pardon me, viewed the Bosnian war, where for the first time in history, rape was considered an actual uh, human rights crime because it was systemically used as a wartime tool in that specific war in an unprecedented manner. It was Mm -hmm. systemic. Every war has rape. What made the Bosnian war different was that it was a systemic raping of the women where 95% of the men were absolutely murdered and buried in pits and women were shipped off to what was called rape camps. The Iranian murder that is about to happen should be viewed with the same lens, especially Mm -hmm. in light of how how sensitive this country seems to be to the Ukrainian war. Some of that uh, empathy needs to bleed over to the Iranians. Mm-hmm. We should say the, the the name of the woman who uh, this whole thing kind of started with, uh, Masha Amini. The religious police saw her, didn't like the way that she was wearing her job. She didn't, they didn't think it was covering enough of her hair. And they put her in jail and they beat her to death. That's what I heard happened. But are, are there different accounts of what happened? Of course, the government has uh, their own version of what happened. Uh, But we are clear on what's happened because there's been a series of reports coming out that have shared the information about the torture, the beatings, the abuse and the rape that has gone on. And this is including raping of the men who are in support of the women who are protesting. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's not the murder on deck. Please, by all means, discuss the Colorado shooting, which is vile and disgusting. And like we said earlier, shame on earth. Shame on us. So it looks like Saturday, the Q Club, which is a gay club in Colorado. Uh, A guy walked in with a long gun. They're not saying which gun it was. Um, So we're not going to assume it was an AR-15. And frankly, it doesn't matter what gun they use. Um, But yeah, he walked in there, started shooting. If this reminds you of the Pulse nightclub shooting where the other, the gay club in Florida that was shot up, it should. 49 people were killed there. The folks at this gay club 
understood what the fuck happened at Pulse. And so they rushed this person. They ran head in. They didn't wait for the police to show up like in Uvalde. They ran head in. They ran straight at this guy. And they were able to subdue him and take his weapon. So five is a lot. Five is five too many. But it could have been worse because at Pulse, it was 49. At Uvalde, it was more than 20. It was, it was yeah, more than 20. You wait for the police, you run. No, they ran straight at this guy. Uh, and it also turns out this guy, and we're going to leave him unnamed because fuck that guy. Agreed. He was he was known-ish to police. He threatened his mom with a bomb just a few years ago. However, they didn't use Colorado's red flag law. Colorado has a red flag law because there's been a lot of mass shootings in fucking Colorado. Okay? Red flag law means you can, hey, this person kind of sketched this and that's going on. They called in a threat. Da, da, da. You should be able to seize their weapons or whatever. Make them more known to police. Well, there's no evidence right now that for that the bomb threat that he called in, which literally had a SWAT team come to, come to his own home, there's no evidence that that bomb threat actually led to felony charges, even though it should have. And if he was black or brown, it would have. And there's no evidence that anybody since then, because that was just a few years ago, like 2019, no evidence that since then, Anyone tried to trigger the red flag law with this person. So are we really surprised that this guy decided to go shoot up a gay club in Lauren Boebert's Colorado? And she had the nerve to send out a tweet talking about thoughts and prayers. People like her could kick rocks as far as I'm concerned. And again, it has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with hypocrisy. Mm. Absolutely. Shameful. It's mm -hmm. shameful. And at what point do we as a society wake up and realize our self-interests are killing us? Mm -hmm. but at the very least, it's killing our children. Yeah. Yeah. Now, going from five to four. Four. Four kids get killed. Four University of Idaho students get killed, brutally stabbed to death. In brutally what stabbed And described as a very messy and bloody crime scene in Idaho, not far away from campus. These, these students all knew each other. Uh, two other roommates, I guess they lived in a, a house kind of situation, two other people who lived there slept through the whole thing, apparently, and also weren't the ones to call the police, but the police are not naming them as a suspect at all. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, isn't that something? I don't know. Um, but yes, four kids. I, I don't understand. H how do four people all get stabbed and how is it that you stab one person and the other people that you want to stab don't wake up, don't see it, don't try to run? Like there had to be someone else, I don't know, with a gun pointed at them or something. They're assuming it was one person. But I don't understand how these other people either slept through that. If that's the case, then maybe were they drugged or someone was ma managed to stop them from running or shouting or saying anything. And last point before I toss it to you, uh, no sign of forced entry either. Weird story. Still unfolding. Not many details. No suspect as of yet. How you sleep through a murder of four people will be a very interesting story to unfold because I'm dying to hear that part. And we'll have to circle back to the story once more information becomes available. Yeah. And some other facts that are very interesting. Nobody called the police until noon the next day. And it wasn't the people. It wasn't the other two uh, people who lived in the house. They like woke up and, and, and left. And I guess they didn't see or, or, or hear or smell anything despite blood being everywhere. It's a very, very bizarre story. My heart goes out to that those four families. I can't imagine how hard it must be to wrap your mind around something like this. It's shameful. And again, shame on earth. Shame on earth. It's, it's been a bad month. 